Good morning everyone. Today's physiology lecture is on the topic platelets. So in the hematology, we have already completed the composition and functions of the blood components and then erythrocytes, the formation and their functions and then leukocytes and now the topic, next topic is platelets. So the learning objectives for this topic platelets are structure and function of platelets, stages and regulation of thrombopoiesis, platelet granules and contents, mechanism of temporary hemostatic plug, and the disorders of platelet functioning and number. So at the end of this session, the student or you should be able to know about the detailed structure and functioning of the platelet, stages and regulation of thrombopoiesis, platelet granules and their contents, mechanism of temporary hemostatic plug formation, and the various disorders related to platelet function and member. So if we compare the size of the blood cell components, that is RBC, WBC and platelets, so you can see here in this picture, RBC is of size, as we all know, of 7.2 microns and WBC is normally if you take lymphocyte as an example, its size is 10 to 14 or 10 to 12 micrometers. And whereas the platelets is only 1.5 to 3.0 micrometers. Okay, so the size is smaller compared to RBC and WBC or we can say smaller, the smallest blood cell component is platelet. So the platelets are small, granulated, non-nucleated, spherical or oval cell bodies having a diameter ranging from 2 to 4 micrometers in diameter. And the normal count is 1.5 to 4 lakhs per mm cube having a lifespan of average 8 days. So there is a considerable variation in size of platelets even in the same individual. Few platelets may have diameter more than half the diameter of red cells, that is more than 4 micrometers. So these platelets are the detached bits from megakaryocyte. So the structure of a platelet, it consists of three things or three structures, cell membrane and the microtubular system or the cytoskeletal system and then cytoplasm. So platelets are nothing but detached bits of the megakaryocytes in the bone marrow. So the platelet, the cell membrane and inside microtubular or cytoskeletal system and the cytoplasmic contents. So what are those? We will see now. So cell membrane is 6 nanometer thick. It consists of glycoproteins, proteins, carbohydrates that is glycocalyx and the phospholipids, cholesterol and glycoproteins. So platelet surface is negatively charged due to presence of sialic acid on the membrane, sialic acid residues. And this prevents the resting platelets to attach to each other or to the negatively charged endothelial cells. And the cell membrane is also having various receptors on the surface that is for collagen, ADP, von Willebrand factor and fibrinogen. And the surface canalicular system is present in the cell membrane. And the glycoproteins aid to prevent adherence of platelets to the normal vascular endothelium. The plasma membrane invaginates into the interior of platelets to form open canalicular system. This serves as a pathway that is for uptake of extracellular calcium and also for the release of intracellular substance. So this open canalicular system present on the, that is the nothing but invagination of plasma membrane into the interior of platelets. And there is also a coat of glycoprotein on its surface which helps its ad adhesion to the injured endothelium but not to normal endothelium. So again, the same thing repeated, glycoproteins 
it prevents the adherence of platelets to normal endothelium and also accelerates the adherence of platelets to collagen and damaged endothelium in ruptured blood vessels forms a receptor for adp and thrombin so i stress this because this may come as a mcq for your uh, theory exam and also need pg entrance examination so what helps in preventing the adherence of platelets to normal endothelium or what accelerates the adherence of platelets that is presence of glycoproteins on the cell membrane and it also forms a receptor for adp and thrombin Phospholipids are accelerated during clotting reaction and they form the precursors for thromboxane E2 and prostaglandin production. In the microtubules or the cytoskeletal system, it is made up of tubulins or proteins and it is responsible for the structural support for inactivated platelets. So the inactivated platelets are which shape? I told you spherical or oval in shape. So, for maintaining that shape, these microtubules are very much helpful. So, there is a submembrane microtubular system consisting of many microtubules arranged beneath the membrane. They are made up of tubulins and cytosolic motors like dynein and kinesin filaments are also attached, associated with microtubules. And they support the discoid shape or the round or oval shape. And then the microfilaments mainly consist of actin molecules that polymerize into filamentous bundles. So these are, there are also few myosin filaments attached to actin filaments. So these actin and myosin constitute the contractile system. So that will come in the next slide. And then the cytoplasm. So as I have told you, uh, the tubular are alpha and beta tubulins that is microtubules and then actin and myosin are the microfilaments or they will be the main contractile proteins of the uh, platelets and apart from that thrombocytin is also uh, one important contractile protein of the platelets <clears throat> these three things enable the activated platelets to change their shape during the platelet activation <laughs> And the cytoplasm also contains Golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum, which helps in synthesis of various enzymes and storing the calcium. And mitochondria helps in synthesis of ATP and ADP. And lysosomes contain hydrolytic enzymes and glycogen granules are present, which are responsible for production of energy anaerobically. <clears throat> Enzyme systems synthesize prostaglandins from phospholipids of platelet membrane. Chemical substances present are calcium ions, magnesium ions, adenosine triphosphate and adenosine diphosphate. And coming to the main thing that is the uh, cellular system that is open canalicular and dense tubular system. So there are many calicula in the platelets that open to the exterior. Presence of numerous canalicula in platelet eliminates the dependence of the cell for its chemical release solely on the migration of granules to the periphery for their fusion with the cell membrane for exocytosis. As the granule movement towards the interior of the cell and fusion of granules with the canalicular membrane facilitates the process of release of chemicals from the platelet granules. This open canalicular system enhances the degree and rate of platelet release. And this, uh, the dense tubular system is a closed system of channels formed by residual endoplasmic reticulum that are less extensive than the canalicular system. So these granules, uh, they, they are of two types, alpha granules and dense granules. Alpha granules are abundant in platelets. About 50 to 80 granules are present per platelet and about 200 nanometer in diameter and they contain various chemicals like secreted proteins that is clotting factors, fibrin stabilizing factor 13 and platelet derived growth factor. These are the main things and I will show you the next slide detailed contents of the granules and the dense granules are about 3 to 8 per platelet 
they are also called dense bodies they have diameter lesser than the alpha and they contain chemicals like serotonin adp atp and calcium these are the non protein substances these are the protein substances alpha granules these are main major in number 50 to 80 granules whereas dense granules are only 3 to 8 per platelet so this is the slide showing the detailed more number of contents of the granules so the alpha granules contain molybdenum gram factor thrombospermin <clears throat> beta thromboglobulin platelet derived growth factor platelet activating factor platelet factor 4 fibronectin plasminogen platelet fibrinogen proaxillin alpha 2 plasmin inhibitor alpha 1 protease inhibitor coagulation factors 5 and 11 tissue plasminogen activator and the contents of dense granules are non protein substances that is serotonin adp calcium atp and pyrophosphate so these are lesser in number so the contents are also less so these are more in number more contents so remember these are the secreted proteins and these are the non secreted non protein substances <coughs> <clears throat> and then coming to the next important topic of this uh, class is thrombopoiesis that is formation of platelets the development of platelets is called thrombopoiesis or thrombocytopoiesis so platelets are the smallest formed elements of the blood they are the non nucleated fragments of megakaryocytes megakaryocytes are the chain cells in the bone marrow so the stages in platelet production which takes place uh, in 10 days so the stages are formation of megakaryoblast and the pro megakaryocyte or the megakaryopoiesis formation of megakaryocyte and then the formation of platelets or uh, finally from the megakaryocyte we will get the platelets so all this uh, production of platelets takes place in the bone marrow and the stem cells are pluripotent pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell so they develop from the myeloid stem cells that form cfu mega which in turn develop into mega karyoblast so this is the cfu colony forming unit mega from this the cells myeloid stem cells develop into mega karyoblast Megakaryoblast is the earliest recognizable cell of the thrombopoiesis. So this size is 20 to 30 micrometers, and the CFU megakaryos mega differentiate to form megakaryoblast. And the cytoplasm is small, blue, and non-granular. Nucleus is large, oval, or kidney shaped. <laughs> So the megakaryocytes grow in three stages that is pro megakaryocyte and then granular megakaryocyte and mature megakaryocyte so the pro megakaryocyte uh, it's formed by the endo reduplication of the nuclear chromatin of megakaryoblast and the nuclear chromatin replicates in multiples of 2 without division of the cell and it's a large cell with a 32 times diploid content of nuclear dna formed cytoplasm is granular and basophilic it contains uh, uh, horseshoe shaped nucleus and so it's also called basophilic me megakaryocyte so the granular megakaryocyte varies uh, uh, having the size between 25 to 50 micrometers and cytoplasm is acidophilic and contains more granules than the pro megakaryocyte and then the mature megakaryocyte it is the largest cell with 30 to 90 micrometers in diameter and the nucleus single multiloaded and the cytoplasm is abundant with red purple granules cell margin is irregular with many pseudopodia which gets detached into blood and form platelets one megakaryocyte will give to 4000 platelets so the nucleus is multiploid or polyploid and the cytoplasm contains uh, many granules of different kinds four types uh, are described like alpha dense lysosomal and myeloperoxidase granules and 
most of the proteins and granules uh, determine the characteristic of platelets. When the need for platelet increases, the megakaryocytes increase in size, number and ploidy and the opposite effect occurs when the demand decreases. So how does this thrombopoiesis or formation of platelets is controlled or regulated? So that is regulation of thrombopoiesis or the control of thrombopoiesis. So the production and release of platelets from the bone marrow remains normally constant. So the production is enhanced by removal of platelets from blood and decreased by transfusion of platelets. This indicates that a feedback regulatory mechanism exists for platelet production. Thrombopoietin, interleukins and GMCSF that is collagen stimulating factor controls the thrombopoiesis. So thrombopoietin, megakaryocyte collagen stimulating activity. So thrombopoietin, it is a hormone. Endogenous hormone, it's short-lived polypeptide produced mainly from the liver palenchymal cells. To some extent, it's also formed from kidney. However, the naturally occurring thrombopoietin for medical uses is very less. Therefore, commercial thrombopoietin have been synthesized by recombinant technology for use in thrombocytopenic conditions. It has a half-life of 20 to 40 hours. They are produced by E. coli. Thrombopoietin stimulates differentiation and proliferation of megakaryocytes. Interleukins 1, 3, 6 and 11 stimulates platelet production. And collagen stimulating activity produced by monocytes, T lymphocytes, fibroblasts and endothelial cells. It stimulates erythropoiesis, granulopoiesis along with thrombopoiesis. So naturally there is a feedback regulatory mechanism by means of production of increased number of platelets when the removal of platelets from blood taking place and also the production of decrease by transfusion of platelets into the body. So that is a normal feedback regulatory mechanism apart from this thrombopoietin and collagen stimulating activity. So the lifespan of the platelets is 8 to 12 days averaging 10 days and the fate is uh, it is destroyed by tissue macrophage system in the spleen and splenomegaly reduces the platelet count whereas splenectomy increases the platelet count. So coming to the normal count and variations in the number of the platelets. So as I have already told you normal count is 1.5 to 4 lakhs per mm cube averaging 2.5 liters per mm cube. The physiological variations are in uh, if we take age the number is less in infant reaching adult level by three months of age and no difference in sex but during menstruation the count is reduced in females and after meal the count increases and after exercise the count increases and if we go to high altitude then also the count increases. And coming to the pathological variations, thrombocytosis that is increase in count more than 4 lakh 5000, sorry 4 lakh 50,000 per mm cube. So this takes place after splenectomy, after hemorrhage, severe injury, major operation and parturition. And myeloproliferative disorders like chronic myeloid leukemia, polycythemia vera and myelofibrosis. So there is also a condition called familial thrombocytosis and in iron deficiency anemia and uh, after surgery and chronic infections. So these are the pathological variations that is increased count more than 4.5 lakh. And thrombocytopenia is a condition when there is when the count decreases to less than 1.5 lakh per mm cube. So this is seen in hereditary thrombocytopenias like Fanconi's anemia Alport syndrome and ITP. ITP is idiopathic thrombocytopenic perfura and hypersplenism that is splenomegaly and HIV infections and aplastic anemia, bone marrow depression, acute leukemia and infections, toxemia, septicemia and uremia and massive transfusion of stored blood also causes increased platelet count. 
and chemotherapy also causes increased production and irradiation of bone marrow or bone marrow depression. And this is uh, some histological slide pictures showing Jain platelet. And this is thrombocytosis that is increased number of platelets and thrombocytopenia decrease or very few number of platelets seen here. And next coming to the properties of platelets. So till now we have seen the structure that is cell membrane, microtubules and um, cytoplasm of the platelets, platelet uh, granules, their contents. And then we have seen the uh, thrombopoiesis that is formation of platelets and then uh, the normal count and variations. And now we will see the properties of platelets. So first property is adhesiveness. Whenever the platelet comes in contact with any wet or rough surface, it gets activated and stick to the surface. The factors responsible for this property is collagen, thrombin, ADP, thromboxane A2, calcium ions and vulnerable band factor. So you can see this is the activated platelet showing glycoprotein 1B and vulnerable band factor on the uh, vessel wall that is endothelium and collagen binding site so this is the injured endothelium and expose some endothelial collagen and next property is aggregation this is a property to stick to each other and factors responsible for this are IDP and thromboxane A2 so you can see platelet activation First, there is adhesion of the platelets to the endothelium and there is aggregation. So, ADP and uh, thromboxane A2 are helpful for aggregation and agglutination. This is the property of clumping together of platelets. Adhesion is sticking of platelet to the uh, endothelium. Aggregation is sticking of platelets one to one. And agglutination is clumping, that is just coming together all in a group like formation and this is due to platelet agglutinins and we will see the functions of platelets so the platelets have role in hemostasis or blood coagulation so first step in blood coagulation always starts with the formation of temporary hemostatic plug or temporary platelet plug so that is the beginning for the blood coagulation and it has role in clot formation and retraction and it has low role in repair of injured blood vessels and it has a role in defense mechanism of the body or phagocytosis and it has transport and storage function and it has a role in vascular growth so how does the platelet help in transport and storage So the platelets help in synthesize, secrete and transport many chemical substances that is the contents of granules like von Willi brand factor, thrombospondin, thromboglobulin, platelet derived food factor, activated factor, platelet factor for all those things. They can be stored, transported with the platelets. And then the vascular growth, they help in the growth of vascular endothelium by secreting mainly platelet derived growth factor. It's also produced by macrophages and endothelial cells. And platelets help in defense mechanism by phagocytosing smaller molecules like immune complexes and viruses. It helps in repair of the uh, injured blood vessels by simply uh, forming a temporary platelet plug for small minor injuries. And then coming to the main part that is hemostasis or blood coagulation. It is the process of forming clots in the wall of the damaged blood vessels and preventing blood loss while, remain, while maintaining blood in a fluid state within the vascular system. So if we see the stages of hemostasis, there are mainly 
four stages that is vascular constriction or vasoconstriction which is seen immediately after the injury to the blood vessel and then the formation of platelet plug or temporary hemostatic plug and then the main definitive clot formation that is blood coagulation and finally fibrinolysis that is lysis of the clot. So the immediate response of blood vessel to injury is vasoconstriction. This is due to contraction of vascular smooth muscle of the uh, blood vessel in response to injury. It instantaneously decreases the loss of blood and also helps in platelet plug, plug formation. Contraction of the smooth muscle to injury is initially a mechanical response that is stretch induced contraction. But however, it is maintained and potentiated by secretion of vasoconstrictor substances like serotonin from the activated platelets. So as you can see in this picture, so the normal blood vessel is being constricted at the site of injury. And then coming to the temporary platelet plug formation, or hemostatic plug formation. And this occurs due to the three properties of platelets that is adhesion, activation, and release reaction or secretion. The initial response to the of platelet to vascular injury is change in shape of platelet and its increased surface adhesiveness to the injured vascular endothelium. So the first change is platelet shape change and adhesion. And then also the platelets stick to each other, that is aggregate at the site of injury, that is aggregation. And then the simultaneous things will happen. If these things will not happen in sequential simultaneously because the shape change and immediately adhes and then aggregate and then activate to release a number of chemicals. This is called release reaction or secretion that further facilitates the vasoconstriction, adhesion and aggregate. So all these changes or steps go hand in hand simultaneously. The whole process finally results in formation of a plug that arrests bleeding temporarily. As platelet plug is not a stable one, this is called temporary or primary hemostatic plug. And this is the first step in hemostasis that occurs very quickly and stops bleeding instantly. And after this temporary plug formation, the next step is the definitive plug or secondary hemostatic plug that occurs um, of, uh, after the fibrin, that thrombin and fibrin all that will come and form the threads, fibrin thread mesh like thing. So that is we will see in one more uh, class, hemostasis or blood coagulation. So for today's class, we will strict uh, restrict to the platelet plug. So platelet adhesion. <clears throat> so damage to the under blood vessel exposes the underlying portion of the vessel wall that are normally concealed from circulating platelets by intact lining of endothelium. The platelets have high affinity to adhere to exposed vascular wall called platelet adhesion. So they become sticky and adhere to the collagen matrix in the subendothelium. At high rates of wall shear present in the small blood vessels, this adherence or adhesion requires participation of one Willebrand factor, a protein synthesized in the vascular endothelial cells and secreted both into the plasma and subendothelium. So the main thing responsible for the adhesion of platelets is von Willebrand factor which is synthesized in the endothelial cells and also secreted from the secreted into the plasma and subendothelium. It also comes to the subendothelium and bind. So this platelet binding site is located on a major glycoprotein of the platelet membrane called GP1B. So megakaryocytes also synthesize this von Willebrand factor which is normal constant of alpha granule and is secreted during platelet activation. So the megakaryocytes will synthesize and also from the vascular endothelial cells from both the sources von Willebrand factor is synthesized. It is an acute phase protein. So these plasma levels rise in inflammatory state because of increased 
one millibrand factor and this levels rise during also third trimester of pregnancy so one more point here to add is factor 8 coagulation factor uh, circulates in plasma bound to one millibrand factor so the factor 8 levels can't be maintained in the absence of one millibrand factor so the main thing here to remember is all about one millibrand factor without which adhesion is not possible so it is synthesized from the megakaryocyte and also from the vascular endothelial cells so you can see the shape change taking place during adhesion the resting platelet is here discoid shape and then the attached platelet showing shape change and pseudopodia emission and the spread platelet it's uh, right side here so this platelet adhesion is controlled by various factors like depth and degree of injury deeper and extensive the injury more is the platelet aggregation this occurs due to release of more quantity of platelet activating factors from the tissue and the site of injury uh, in the microcutaneous vascular bed it depends on platelets or hemostasis whereas injury of vascular bed in muscles and joints rely more on coagulation mechanism so platelet aggregation is more in microcutaneous tissues and coming to the age of individual as composition of vessel wall changes with age platelet aggregation alters with age in elderly aggregation is less and hematocrit that is increased number of red cell increases the platelet aggregation by forcing the platelets to the periphery of blood seams blood stream and coming to the speed of blood flow when the blood flow is faster platelets do not get adequate time to interact with the vessel wall also the force tending to pull platelet from vessel wall and from another platelet is more in fast flow that prevent adhesion and aggregation so thus sluggishness or slowing of blood flow facilitates the platelet adhesion and the size of blood vessel also have a role in platelet adhesion by determining the number of platelets passing through the vessel at a given time so these are the six factors which control or affect the platelet adhesion and next platelet activation after platelets adhere to the collagen fibers it becomes spiked and much stickier platelets release large quantity of adp and thromboxane a2 from its storage granules these chemicals are attract they help in attracting the nearby platelets so one to one platelet sticking is the and then the platelets will get activated so a platelet mass starts to grow after adhesion so as they activate they undergo a series of uh, changes that is shape change aggregation liberation and oxidation of arachidonic acid secretion of granular contents reorganization of surface membrane phospholipids and centripetal contraction of actomyosin of the cytoskeleton so the early events shape change and aggregation are reversible and loosely aggregated platelets may break away from the blood to re-enter the circulation but as the activation progresses the platelet cytoskeleton crushes the platelets together and thrombin begins to clot fibrinogen on and around the platelets converting the plugs to stable and permanent plugs so in the beginning the early shape change and uh, a primary phase of aggregation are reversible so they can be easily detached from the platelet plug and enter into circulation but as the time increases there is fibrinogen uh, spreading over the clot and that will convert to permanent plug so this is the shape change you can see the normal platelets in a blood vessel before uh, any injury and after hitting a collagenous fiber or the injured blood vessel the shape change is like this with many pseudopodia and these are the structure or the shape of the activated platelets you can see so two primary agonists trigger the platelet activation that is thrombin formed at the injury site and the sequences on the collagen in subendothelium adp and arachidonic acid oxidation products maintain and amplify the activation
So this is the picture showing the arachidonic acid oxidation and products generated in the platelets. So the endopor peroxide prostaglandin H2 is a common substrate for the formation of thromboxane A2 in the platelet and PGI2 prostacyclin in the endothelial cells. So the major substrate is 47 KD protein and the phosphorylation of this protein is essential for platelet activation. Inositol phosphate 3 acts as a calcium inophore that causes calcium to enter cytoplasm from platelet reservoir and triggers activation of myosin kinase that is for shape change and activation of phospholipase A2. So the activated phospholipase A2 liberates arachidonic acid from the platelet membrane phospholipids. So this arachidonic acid, it is uh, uh, degraded by means of two pathways, catalyzed by two pathways. One is lipoxygenase, one is cyclooxygenase. So by lipoxygenase, uh, these are Ecosa tetraenoic acid derivatives 12 HP ET and 12 HET. HP is hydroperoxy, H is hydroxy. So these are having unknown functions, so don't worry about this. But cyclooxygenase pathway, uh, it is producing PGG2, prostaglandin G2, and also PGH2. So this PGH2 in platelets, uh, it produces some. Uh, little uh, product, enzymatic degradation products that is prostaglandin D2 and thromboxin A2 is the main uh, substance. It binds to plat platelet membrane receptors and phospholipase C and, act and helps in the activation of platelets. And in endothelium, this is prostacyclin synthetase. It helps in secreting the prostaglandin I2. So the regulation of calcium pump lowers the calcium levels. And prostaglandin I2 helps to keep circulating platelets in an unstimulated state through activation of platelets and adenyl, adenyl cyclase and cause increase in cyclic AMP levels. And the PGT2 form in small amounts can also activate platelet adenyl cyclase, this one. And here one important point to mention is aspirin. Use of aspirin irreversibly inactivate the platelet cyclooxygenase pathway which prevents synthesis of PGH2, thromboxane A2 and uh, PGI2. Taking a single aspirin may cause increased bleeding time by 1 to 5 minutes. So in patients with hemophilia, bleeding time may increase markedly. And in patients with coronary artery disease, aspirin combination with heparin is given to keep the lumen of artery open after the dissol after dissolving the thrombus. Okay, so this is the clinical applied aspect use of aspirin. It in inhibits or impairs the cyclooxygenase pathway from the arachidonic acid so that the activating factors thromboxane A2 and prostaglandins are not produced. So how the arachidonic acid is produced? Activated phospholipase A2 liberates the Arachidonic acid. And then the platelet aggregation. Large number of activated platelets stick to each other and forms platelet aggregation or platelet plug. It's fairly loose but is successful in blocking the blood loss. So that's why it's called temporary plug. So don't get confused with these three words adhesion, activation, and aggregation. So adhesion is the first step or the first immediate action. So the platelets become uh, adhere to the surface of the, uh, sorry, endothelium, vascular endothelium. And then immediately they become aggregated and then activated. Aggregation and activation are simultaneous actions taking place. So here for aggregation, the important thing required are GP2B3A complex on the platelet surface membrane. So fibrinogen receptors are expressed in a GP2B3A complex. It is an integral protein that recognizes fibrinogen amino acid sequences. So fibrinogen is a dimeric protein 
membranic molecule which can form bridge between the GP2B 3A complex on two opposing activated platelets. So this causes the platelets stick to each other in the primary phase of aggregation which is a reversible action and it progresses to second stage of irreversible after the secretion of the platelets begins. Okay, so first of all this binding of or attaching or sticking of two platelets with the help of GP2B3A complex is reversible. But after the secretion process from the platelet begins, it becomes irreversible. Thrombospondin, an alpha granule protein, helps in irreversibly binding the uh, platelets to each other. By binding to both platelet surface receptor and fibrinogen molecule, holding two platelets together, it reinforces fibrinogen glow of aggregation. Okay, so uh, thrombospondin and uh, GP2B 3A complex are helpful in uh, aggregation of platelets. So in this picture you can see a vessel wall and this is the site of injury and all the platelets are aggregated because of this IDP and thromboxane 2 So this is the blood flow slow here fast and then slow. So the fully activated platelets are this shape uh, having the pseudopodia and the tethered discoid platelets to the already activated and these platelets also become activated by after attaching here. So this is the GP2B3A complex you can see here on the activated platelets. So this three set dimeric molecule that is fibrinogen it helps in binding two uh, opposite platelets having the GP2B uh, 3A complex. So this will be fibrinogen will be in between. So this is reversible in beginning but as after the platelet act secretion starts this binding is irreversible so that the aggregation of platelets is prolonged for some time till the uh, endothelium is repaired or the vessel wall is has come back to normal state till that time this aggregation or uh, plug formation is present so this deficiency of von willebrand factor is called von willebrand disease and deficiency of this complex is glanzmann's thrombocytopenia and deficiency of gp1b so this is for adhesion so I have told you this protein helps in adhesion. Bernard Foliar syndrome. So coming to the last topic of today's class that is types of platelet disorders. So disorders in the platelet number and function. So we can divide into two types coagulation disorder and platelet disorder. Coagulation or we can call bleeding disorders include hemophilia and valve Millibrand disease. And the platelet disorders include deficiency of vitamin K, bernard Solier syndrome, thrombasthenia of Glanzmann and Nagili or simply Glanzmann thrombasthenia, gray platelet syndrome, dense granule deficiency syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So all these are the various disorders related to platelets. So about hemophilia, you already know in your intermediate. So simply it is a disease associated with prolonged bleeding due to deficiency in clotting factor E. It is an X-linked disease. So the types and symptoms, you can just have a look. And the von Willebrand disease. So I will explain this briefly. So this is the most common hereditary coagulation abnormality. It can also be acquired as a result of other medical condition. It is due to deficiency of von Willebrand factor. So this factor mediates binding of glycoprotein 1B to the collagen that is the main first step, platelet adhesion. So this mediate activation of platelets and formation of platelet plug. So defect in this factor resulting in glycoprotein 1B does not bind to collagen. So unable to activate the platelets primary platelet plug formation does not produce. So comparison between hemophilia A, B and von Willebrand. Uh, here the 
prothrombin time, activated plasma thromboblastin time, and bleeding time. So these are the platelet function tests. So if you compare hemophilia A, B, and von Willebrand, so the APTT and bleeding time are increased in von Willebrand. This is where are whereas in hemophilia A and B only the APTT is increased. And the symptoms of von Willebrand disease are abnormal menstrual bleeding, bleeding of gums, bruising, nosebleeds, skin rash. And Berner Solier syndrome is also known as hemorrhage perus thrombocytic dystrophy. It's due to deficiency of GP1B, the receptor for von Willebrand factor. So the lack of GP1B causes von Willebrand factor unable to bind to the glycoprotein, finally leading to decrease in primary clot formation or hemostasis. Characterized by abnormal large platelets or chain platelets, and prolonged bleeding time, thrombocytopenia, increased megakaryocytes, and decreased platelet survival. Some of the symptoms include purpura, epistaxis, menorrhagia, and gingival gastrointestinal bleeding. Purpura is nothing but hemorrhagic spots on the skin. And deficiency of vitamin K. So vitamin K is very important in blood coagulation. So if the clotting factor does not mature, it is useless in the hemostatis process. So some of the possible symptoms of vitamin K deficiency is risk of massive uncontrolled bleeding and hematomas. So this is very important, the rhombus thing of Klansman. It is a rare coagulopathy. It can be inherited as autosomal recessive manner or acquired as autoimmune disorder. It is due to deficiency of GP2B3A complex. It is a receptor for fibrinogen. So when this receptor is in dysfunction, it cannot fibrinogen cannot bind to the platelets. And as, as a result, no fibrinogen bridging of platelets to other platelets occur. As a result, no fibrinogen bridging of platelets to other platelets occur. And in other words, primary hemostasis is inhibited and prevent platelet aggregation. Bleeding time will be significantly prolonged. And the symptoms include increased mucosal bleeding, epistaxis, menorrhagia, increased bleeding post-operatively, and the bleeding tendency is variable but may be severe. Platelet numbers and morphology are normal. Aggregation is normal with restrocetin but impaired with other agonists such as ADP, thrombin, collagen, or epinephrine. And the gray platelet syndrome is a rare inherited bleeding disorder. The abnormal alpha granules appear gray on the blood film stained by uh, Grunwald Jimsa strain, hence the syndrome name. It's caused by the inability of platelets to store alpha granule proteins. The platelets' hemostatic proteins are not released at the site of an vascular injury, thus, slows the aggregation and vessel repair and contribute to bleeding tendency. And ITP is a very important uh, syndrome or disease. It's immune thrombocytic pinic purpura. It's an autoimmune disease and the term idiopathic indicates that disease of unknown cause or origin. And the word purpura comes from the description of bruised colored skin of some afflicted uh, area with the disease, purple color caused by blood leaked under the skin. So it's a bleeding disorder in which immune system destroy the platelets. Persons with the disease have too few platelets in the blood. The two types of ITP are acute and chronic. Acute ITP lasts less than six months. It mainly occurs in children. And it often occurs after a viral infection. And chronic lasts six months or longer and mostly affects adults. Some teenagers and children also get this type. It affects women two to three times more than men. And abnormal heavy menstruation, bleeding into the skin, Characteristic skin rash that looks like pinpoint red spots, that is petty K. And easy bruising, nosebleed or bleeding in the mouth are some common symptoms. In the lab diagnosis is by status of platelet and coagulation process. Screen by using simple lab tests like bleeding time, clotting time, activated partial thromboblastin time, and prothrombin time, full blood count, and peripheral blood film, and uh, gene sustained uh, blood film. So coming to the summary of the platelet plaque formation. 
so we have seen the steps in the uh, platelet plug formation first is adhesion activation aggregation and secretion so check out whether you know all these points in detail or not so what helps in adhesion and what are the changes in activation and what helps in aggregation and what are the things of the platelet granules okay so i hope you understood the class thank you